everybody. How are you doing today? Hi, it's Jess and Tish again. We're here for a Facebook Live event and we're really, really excited because this week we've teamed up with Wall and a Pampered Pony. So they're going to go ahead and introduce themselves. I hope you guys get ready with your questions and we have some awesome giveaways today. So stick tight with us. Hi, I'm Simon. I'm from this in the UK. Hi, I'm Doug. Wall Clipper, sales in the East Coast. Hi, I'm Natasha, and I'm from a Pampered Pony Equine Clipping and Spa Services. Hi, I'm Jessica Roslin. I am a person for Big D's Tack and Vet Supply. And today we have Paladin. He is a six-year-old Georgian Grande gelding, and Natasha is going to be clipping him for our demo today. Hi, I'm Rich. I'm with Wall Clipper. I'm the sales manager. Hi, I'm Brandy. I'm the product manager for the equine market at Wall Clipper. Well, great, everybody. Here we all are. And we're going to give you some demonstrations on how to clip a horse. Um, and Natasha, she's going to talk about some of the clippers that we use and some of her methods. And we hope you guys enjoy. Any questions, just feel free. We'll be watching and we'll go from there. Hi, everyone. Um, hope you guys are having a good day. We actually are here in sunny Ohio right now um, at the beautiful um, facility here with High Water Farm. I just want to make sure I said that correctly. Um, we're here with this gorgeous, gorgeous bay gelding who I, obviously you could see is a draft cross, um, meaning that, saying that, that comes with his feathers and his longer coat um, and a little bit thicker of a skin. So what we're going to do with him is we're going to start off with a stronger, thicker clipper um, that actually is meant for larger coats to, to get it off easier. Uh, he was groomed already, but we are going to just take a little bit of a, a curry comb or a shedding blade just to get any dirt that's on top of him off. Perfect. So right here we actually have the wall shedding blade. Obviously we are going to clip it all off, but we're just going to make sure there's no dirt on top, that the undercoat is lifted up a little bit, and as you can see, a lot is coming off. Now he is a hunt horse. He does still have um, sun fading from his last clip. So you can see his, his coat that was left last time is still here and the coat underneath grew in a little bit later. Same length, um, <laughs> but you can really tell the difference here. <laughs> so with him we're going to start off with the Star Clipper which is made by Lister. Um, it has many interchangeable blades. Where is my big clipper? Excellent. Perfect. So here we have the Star. Um, it's just a magnificent machine. It's strong. It's not too bulky for your hand uh, like some other clippers that come out uh, that they have on the, on the market. Um, one thing I realized with this clipper, it does not burn your hand. The blades don't get uh, hot fast. And we always make sure the reason why they don't get fast, uh, hot fast is because we use oil all the time. Um, not big on aerosol sprays because uh, most of them do uh, more than just lubricate the blade, it actually cleans it, so instead of it being smooth, it has a lot more friction. So, with them instead, we're going to take our oil, oil it on the side here, if my oil would open. <laughs> Brand new top, that's why. Sorry? I brought you in from the UK. I did, yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, of when you're oiling clipper blades, you literally just want a not too much amount so it's overloaded because then it'll just be on the horse and it'll grab the hair. You want a good amount right here in the corner, right here on the other corner, and the bottom, bottom slide right here on both sides. Now you see a tiny bit dripped out, so what I'm going to do is shake off the excess, let them run for a second, let him check them out. So I really want to make sure he is comfortable with it. So since he just heard them turned on and he kind of gave me a little look, I'm just going to take them and I'm going to rub his body with them. Make sure that he's okay with them being all over his body. He's not upset with it. And he's kind of looking at the cord. So what I'm going to do is put the cord behind me so he doesn't see it. He just focuses on me. So I'm rubbing his body down, making sure he realizes it's okay. I mean, I would love for him to start chewing a little bit. His lips are moving a little bit, so I'm also going to give him a good rub with it. So now, while my one hand is still rubbing him, I'm going to turn my clipper on. He now thinks that noise is giving him this good massage. I rub his body down. Now 
down slow, we're going to introduce the clipper to his body. That's a boy. That's a good boy. Run down a little bit. Roll it around. Make sure, make sure it's the, the sensitive spots, like the flank area. He's not too timid about his legs. Now, if you notice, I'm not standing behind him, nor directly in front of him. I'm actually off to the side. You always, when you're clipping, you want to make sure you're in your safety zones. Sounds crazy, but a horse can kick you here, and a horse can kick you here. They are very athletic, and they could bend in ways that you'll never imagine they can. So, since he is calm, quiet, he's not worried about it, we're going to start off with our clip. Now, he is an eventing horse. He does do fox hunting, cross country. So we are actually going to leave him with what's called a hunt clip or a blanket clip, which would only be this area over his back spinal cord area to keep, it, keep him warm. Everything else, like his hot spots from his flank, his chest, his neck, and his underbelly will be clipped off. Um, reasons for that is because that are, those are his hot spots and um, you know, for vet purposes, for health purposes, for just grooming purposes, um, once you get this coat off, they're able to keep a lot cooler, especially on a big horse like this, and especially eventing. You're running and sweating up a lot. Um, so we're going to start off with the star. Uh, on here I have a 1.8 millimeter blade. And um, I, pr I, I like to use between 1.5 and 1.8. I know a lot of companies have different numbers for them. Um, but if you remember those numbers, 1.5 through 1.8, that'll keep you, that'll keep you good. Um, since we already desensitized him a little bit with the clipper, I'm going to go ahead and start where normally I would start and where I would recommend to start. Um, we're actually going to go right up to the shoulder. And the reason why I'm starting here is he can see me still. I'm not behind him. I'm not approaching him in an area that he's not sure of. It's right here. It's close to him. He's okay with it. So with going against the hair, we're going to start off at his shoulder and work our way up to his wrist. Now you can see the difference between his coat there and an unclipped coat. Now, I like to use the stars to take off everything fast. Um, that way it's, it's a lot easier on the horse. They're not standing on cross ties for too long. Uh, so we're just going to take off everything and then we're going to switch over to another clipper to make it even more show ready and get to all those little fine spots that maybe a larger clipper for somebody can't get into. So again, we're going to go back over the right shoulder and then work our way against the hair. Now if you notice, I'm doing straight even lines. I'm going to work my way up those straight even lines. And now, if you come in closer a little bit, you can see there's a couple marks left. And now a lot of people have that issue when they're clipping. And you'll have a horse that will either look like a cheetah or will have some kind of disease going on, but it really is just that they have a bad clip job. So what I recommend doing is to make that show ready clip come out. You're gonna go on your straight lines, up and down, and then you're gonna take your clipper blade and you're gonna lightly, lightly just rotate the blade to another angle. Now I'm still gonna go on that straight line, but my, ang my angle of my blade is just twisted a little bit. Now if there's still a mark behind it, now I'm just gonna take the clipper and go the opposite way. Now if you notice, all those little fine lines that were left behind are all disappearing. So even if I don't switch over to a smaller clipper to get that fine, fine, refined show clip, you can still achieve it with a star clipper. So I'm going to cruise along. If anyone wants to jump in and talk about the star, that'd be great. Would love to have you come in, Simon. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions out there? Or? No? Okay. So it's Sash saying that the, the star, which um, this would make the um, biggest selling clipper in its uh, class in the world, very powerful and ideally designed for this, uh, this purpose, full body fit clippers. Actually, Sash is using the um, 2.5 mil um, medium blade at the moment. Sorry. Um, one of the reasons for that is obviously the, the, the hair is a little bit thicker, um, so to make the, the um, clipper work less hard, change the blades, but also what we will, we will do is demonstrate how easy it is to change the blades um, and talk a little bit about the tensioning. Tensioning is 
really, really easy on the, uh, on the lifter clipper um, and uh, involves at least vital as well because if you don't tension correctly, it can cause, uh, cause all kinds of issues. Under tensioning, that causes, uh, leaves a gap, means that you're tearing instead of clipping. And if you over tension, then you're putting too much pressure on the blades. Oil, please. Oil. Very, very important. Now that honestly is one of the most important things about keeping your, um, your clipper and your blade cool. The more you oil, the more you take all the hair out of it, the less friction there is behind it, uh, the smoother it will run. I have came across a couple horses that I had to redo their clips um, only due to the fact that they were burnt. Uh, the clipper who actually did the work on them didn't realize that this actually can get to almost an iron. So you're almost ironing a horse and you don't want that. That actually can burn them, it will burn them, and it, and it hurts. Uh, I've seen a lot of coats ruined because of that. So I highly recommend oiling about every 10 minutes or so. Or personally, I like to have music on when I clip. That way they kind of are paying attention to that rather than the noise of the clippers or anything else going on. And I use the music as, as a timer. So about every two songs or so, I will oil my clippers, let them sit for a second, even change the blade if I need to. The blades last longer that way. Um, when you're actually preparing to put your clippers away, that's when I use an aerosol can, can. I will clean off everything, make sure every hair is gone, oil them, package them up, and put them right away. And for my next clip, I know they're prepared and ready Could to be go? used. There's no delay, they just put the blade on, and you're ready to go. It's very true. I can't, can't emphasize the importance of oil enough. Um, <laughs> we recommend every, every 10 minutes. At the moment we're using a, a slightly thinner oil, um, say you need to oil a bit more regularly. And obviously for the times when you're, you've got uh, tension and load on the clipper, but you're clipping fresh air, well that's, uh, that's, that's also not good. So you need to be mindful of that. So you know, don't run the clipper too much. Stand back and admire your work. Turn the clipper off. Um, otherwise you're going to blunt the blades and that means you're not going to be clipping as well. So. Give your horse a treat too and turn your clip off. <laughs> That's, I come in like the ice cream truck so I make sure every horse that I clip either knows that I'm either coming with goodies in my pockets or they know that I'm, I'm the person to go to. <laughs> it that way. I have a question. How often should you change blades? Um, I like to change, um, I've used my blades on 23 horses to be exact with one blade. Uh, each of those horses were bathed, groomed, uh, properly curry. There was not a speck of dirt on them. But when you have horses that are either turned out on a regular basis without either blanketing or they're covered in mud or cushions, for instance, um, I can get a blade with massive dirt, about three horses, four horses, without it leaving any lines or giving me any issues behind it of having to slow down or anything like that. Um, I, I would recommend if you're going to do a show clip, use a new blade. Uh, if you're doing something around the barn, that old blade that you have, as long as it's properly lubricated and, and cleaned out, it'll work just as well. So uh, I'm gonna head back to, to clipping him so that way we get a little bit more of his body so you guys can see where we're going with. And then I'm gonna switch over to the wall KM10 uh, once this whole side is done with the, with the star so you guys can see the difference between um, you know, getting the hair off quickly, getting it done right, to even more so of the show ready clip. Should we change the blade? Yeah, you know too? what? Let's change the blade so you guys can see how easy it is. Um, I have a lot of people that I've, I've came encounter with who don't know how to change the blade on a Lister uh, clipper. So uh, there's there's tensions behind it. There's there's screws behind it. There's things like that. But Simon right here has the easy way to show how to do it. <laughs> As ever, in, if you could just hold that, yeah, sure. that'd be brilliant. As ever in life, there's always a good story. Say, so, um, tensioning, as I said, is really, really important. In, in fact, it's vital because the care of the blade, the care of the clipper, the blades are the things that are doing the hard work, and we make them with loving care in England. Um, and sold, sold all. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. So many, everybody's so helpful today. Um, right. We'll come back to those in a second. So this is really, really, really simple. As I say, and what you'll notice is that I don't need any tools. All I need is two fingers and a thumb and some very helpful people. <laughs> so that really was easy. All you did was unscrew the top, pull out the pin from the bottom, and the, t and the blades come right off. Exactly that. Exactly. No oh. need for screwdrivers or Perfect. a tool kit or anything else. And um, also looking to demonstrate 
So we put the top cutter in, and then the bottom blade, high quality vanadium steel, which means it holds its sharpness and is also very, very durable in terms of potentially dropping it, which does happen when these loving creatures decide to do it their way. Decide to do it their way. <laughs> so what we have there is a tension bolt, um, round peg, square hole. I love that one. <laughs> Turn it over, two fingers and a thumb. And again, tension nut, tension spring. So we take the spring, put that on. Occasionally when you've used your, your clipper, some hair may get, uh, may get in there. Just a little bit of a blow, clears it out. There wasn't actually any hair in there. We just want to do Yeah, that. I just want to demonstrate, Thank you know, because <laughs> nobody knew how to do that. So this is the easy bit and the clever bit, some very clever people. So how do you know how tight to make that? I was just getting to that. Oh, well, no, that's yeah, right. I'm <laughs> just ahead of the game here. It's a great anticipatory question. I like that. <laughs> so whilst I've been talking and uh, everything else, I've been tensioning all the way down. All the way down. So it's kind of finger tight just there. Don't need to wrench it, do anything else. And on the top, there's a little ridge. Hmm. We mark that ridge. One. And then one half turn back. So that's all the way down. One and a half turns back. Oh, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then again, so this blade's got no oil on it. I'm just going to lean in front of the camera. And we we'll put some more oil on there. Did we mention how important oil was? I can't remember. Uh, I don't well, think we, we did. No? We can mention no. it one, one more time. time. I think so, yeah. <laughs> so oil is really, really important, everybody. <laughs> and that is how you change a blade. Awesome. That's fantastic. Okay. Now, the length on this blade right now? That's now 1.8, which will okay. match the number 10. Perfect. So this is what I would normally use for show-ready clips. Like I said before, it was between a 1.5 and a 1.8. Uh, that is the closest humane clip that you could get. I know in the show pony world, they go a lot uh, closer. For instance, on like the white ones, they want them to be pink rather than white. Um, I personally like 1.5 and 1.8 because I have horses that live outside, so if they decide to roll on the dirt or anything like that, they're not getting uh, nicks and cuts and bruises um, as easily as to an even smaller um, clip job. So I'm going to cruise back on. Uh, well, we're, we're yes. Gonna, um, Jen from New Hi, York. Hi, Jen. <laughs> um, or Jen from Ontario, I'm sorry. Excellent. She asked about avoiding... How do you avoid making clipper tracks? Which you kind of covered, but can clipper you just tracks. go over it real sure. quick again? Come on up close. So I'm going to show you actually on his belly area so you can see it a little bit easier. Um, again, I'm going to make sure he knows that I'm approaching him with the clipper, uh, which is good. He's playing up there with his lead line, so that's good. I'm going to go with the hair from his flank area, go towards his wither, and go up with it. Um, now, if you see, there's actually no, no lines left behind. So I'm actually going to leave you guys lying so you can see it. And I'm not putting my as much pressure on it, and that's going to leave lines behind. Now, if you notice, all these little marks. I don't like to really push the blade or clipper onto him, but I like to have the just amount of pressure where you can see it pushing into the skin. And what that does is it pulls that hair that's underneath, and it stops you from making clipper lines. Now, I'm going to go a couple little bit more. So that way you can see where I'm starting off with. Now you have your straight lines going across. Now like I said on the shoulder before, I'm still going to go on that same exact path, but instead of taking my clipper and going straight across, I'm going to now angle it a little bit, still on that same path, and now just go back and forth over it. Now if you notice, all these little hairs are being picked up and cut off. Same like here, they're all being picked up and cut right off. Now, if that doesn't work, take your clipper and angle it the opposite way, downwards. The hair grows in any which way it wants. Now, if he had a crazy party last night in his stall and slept and woke up all disheveled, then that hair is going to be the same way. Um, I know there's plenty of days that I wake up and I'm like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> so, same thing for them. They could have a, either a, a rough night or a good party in their stalls, and you know, you'll have hair that's sticking up in every which direction. You just have to take your clipper blade and get that that spot cleaned up by just moving it and, and changing the angle a little bit. So I'm going to go back over, over those areas now. Can you see? That was Jen that asked that question, right? Yes. From yes. Ontario? She said thank you. Oh, excellent. But can you see now the difference between here and the patch? There's actually patchwork down there. Now, stay up close for me. I'm going to come across like so. Now, it might take a little bit longer of a 
clip, but once you get the hang of this, I mean, your hand can go 100 miles per hour. And there you have your perfect lineless clip. Great work. Simon, we have a question for you. Okay, fine. Does the vibration of the clippers loosen the tension much, or does that spring help prevent it? Uh, a, there isn't very much vibration, but the spring holds everything in place. So, no, the tension is, uh, is set. And once it's set, you think that all the way down, one and a half turns back, you're safe and golden. All you've got to do is just keep oiling and keep clipping. Keep up the good work, yeah. Awesome, thank you. I'll actually go off uh, that vibration uh, question. A lot of the clippers that I've worked with throughout the years um, that I came across, I mean, your hands and your whole body shaking afterwards. There's barely anything to this. And I, the reason why I'm going to do this and hang it is you can see that there's nothing actually vibrating even off this little piece right here. It's very smooth running. The only thing you hear is, is the sound, um, which a lot of the horses end up falling asleep from that sound anyway. They get a little bit relaxed. And like I said, throw some music on. Uh, I was just falling asleep. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> um, you know, throw some music on. Give your horse some hay even just to keep him occupied. That noise ends up disappearing after a few minutes. Um, any, any questions on there that you guys want me to go over quickly? If, if there's anyone what is your best body clipper? What is my best body clipper? Uh, well, the Lister Star is a body clipper. Um, this honestly will do everything from head to toe on a horse. Obviously, the wall has made some smaller clippers. Let me pull, pull one out. Um, we have right here the KM10 made by the wall. It is just as powerful. Um, oh, it's quiet. It's, it's very quiet. It is just as powerful as the, the Lister Star. Uh, obviously, it's a lot smaller in width, and it might take you a little bit longer to do a full body, but you can do a full body on this. I would recommend starting off with Lister, get it all done and taken off, and then coming through with your KM10 to make it show ready. Uh, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use it right now so that way you can see the difference between, hold on to that for one second. I'm going to use this area on his body again, um, leave a couple little track marks behind, and then I'm going to go over it with that, with that clipper so you can see the difference between having a larger clipper and a smaller body clipper. I mean, though, they, they can both do the same job, but I would recommend, again, starting off with this and then finishing off with that and then at the end with either like a co-conditioner or, or an oil just to make sure everything comes out right together. So I'm going to go over his body again. We're going to pull off this. Now, did you see him twitch just there? I actually just did the wrong thing. I approached this horse without even letting him know that I was going to put the clipper on him. So again, I'm going to actually rub his body, let him know. Now see how he picked up his leg? He said, hey, you didn't tell me last time that you were going to do that. So now I'm going to do it again. He didn't lift his leg. He's not bothered by it. Pays no mind. Now I can go and start off with it. So I'm going to come across here. Take off. Now I'm going to go really fast for a second so you can see how quick this hair comes off with the loose and soft. Now you can see the length in his coat that he has. There is a lot going on here. He's got his full winter coat going on still in the spring. So now that we are going to switch over from the Lister Star to the KM10, you'll be able to see these track marks that I, that I left behind, they're all going to disappear. Now, I, I uh, uh, excuse me, when I do show ready clips, I'll come across, take everything off, and then this is my last preparation for show ready clipping. So it's a little bit smaller, but all those little fine spots are coming right off. Now if you notice my hands going up, down, left, right, in any, any direction, and I'm not following those tracks, I'm now going around any area that I see. Um, I'm very meticulous, so like, if you come in a little bit closer, you can see actually there are a couple little lines here, but I'm gonna make sure those little clipper lines are gone, just by rubbing away everything that's left. Now, there is a patch here left, so I'm gonna show you that this clipper itself can still take that right off. And I'll take it off smoothly, but it's going to take me a little bit more time. Obviously it is a lot quieter. Uh, it has the same, same vibration as, as the Lister. It's just the sound that you hear. And it will, it will do the body clip fully, but you will be there for a little bit longer. So 
put some good music on, grab a big bale of hay. Okay, we've got a couple of things. First of all, happy birthday, Natasha. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's from Margaret. Um, Ashley says, my clipper dragon dye in hair like this. Oh, uh, that's, that was an LOL, sorry. These are nice clippers though, Ashley. Um, and then, what's the best time of year to clip? It really depends on where you're located. Um, I clip all year round. My show horses are clipped throughout the summer, spring, fall, and winter. Uh, during, during the winter months, I don't if you're not showing and your horse is just hanging out, I, I wouldn't recommend to clip. I would just let them be a horse, you know, come down, curry them. Uh, but the best time is, honestly, springtime, because that's when shedding season comes in. And right after the summer, right when fall's about to hit. And the reason why I do that is that prepares you for the winter time. Uh, we bundle where I'm from, from, we put blankets on and we make sure that they're very packed in and tightly closed up and warm. Um, my horse is actually still an American flag from November because I overbundled her. But I don't now have to clip her for the springtime because it's already, it's already taken off. So it really depends on your horse too, um, the immune system behind them. If you have a horse that has a longer coat like this, uh, if you have a horse that maybe has Cushing's, uh, which I would recommend Cushing's horses to at least do every four to six weeks, it'll just be a lot easier to have them uh, clipped off. Uh, and a horse like this, for instance, that has a draft breed behind it, they have thicker skin and a lot more pores than your regular thoroughbred would have or um, an Arabian, which has a lot thinner of a skin. So thicker skinned horses, larger poured horses, I would recommend clipping spring, even summer, if they, if they grow a little bit more, uh, and definitely fall. Winter, let them hang out, let them go make snow angels outside, and let them go have fun. Um, but if you need to, obviously, you have to. So. And um, what's the best clipper to use near the mane? Near yeah. the mane, okay. So I've, always, I've been asked that question a lot of times, how I get even my straight lines. Uh, it's, it's really about me locking my hand. You could use any type of clipper you want by the mane, uh, as long as you have a steady hand and a horse that will stay um, pretty much you know, still. Uh, what I'll do is if you want to come over on this side over here, I'm going to take this clipper, uh, the KM10, which I have a 10 blade on it. It's a 1.8 millimeter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the bed of his mane, which you could see the difference between hair color. Um, his, his coat is actually growing into his mane. So we're going to separate that and bring that downwards. So as you can see, I kind of made a line with my own my own hands just by pulling down his coat from his mane. Um, now these frays right here, that is his mane. That was uh, probably cut off at a, a previous clipping uh, by accident. It happens, uh, can't really uh, you know, stop that from happening unless you have a very still hand. Uh, not only that, a lot of, um, I actually have a couple clients who will ask for more of an arched um, line so that way their horses look a little bit more pronounced of an arch and it's kind of like them saying, oh, my pasture horse has been worked nonstop, but it's just the illusion. So I'm going to take my clipper. I'm going to make sure he knows I'm going up to him with it. See how relaxed he got. He knows I'm about to clip him. I'm going to actually hold his halter so that way I, have, I know where he's going to move before he moves. And I'm going to take it, run it up. He could play with it. That's okay. If, if your horse is a little bit fidgety and anything like that, give him some hay, give him a toy, give him some treats to keep him you know, still on that part. So my hand now, if you notice, my hand is locked. And the, what I'm talking about locked is this position right here from my elbow to my hand. So I, if you notice, it's literally going in one spot. So I'm gonna grab his halter. I'm gonna run it across. Now, if you notice, there's still a little bit more coat left behind to the main line. So let's see if we can get him to stand still a little bit, because he likes to play, he's cute. And we're gonna come across. Now, if you come in a little bit closer, if you notice, this part right here is really the only part that's really touching his coat, not the actual bottom of the blades. So it's kind of like I'm using a comb, the end of a comb, and just pulling those hairs 
right off. Now I'm going to brush it off, and now you have a perfect straight line. Now there are a couple pieces that are left behind, and the reason why I'm leaving those behind is it's going to help that hair that was clipped off previously by accident, it's going to help that grow down. So when he's braided up for an eventing show, uh, it actually will look more natural than a pin straight line. Uh, I have a couple clients who need to have pin straight, and then I have a couple that want it to look very natural. And it also depends on what show you're in. Um, if you're more, if you're doing more of a cowboy versatility, you know, cow sorting, um, you know, ranch roping or anything like that, you want your horse to look a little bit more natural. When you're doing, uh, you know, big reigning shows or western pleasure, they're very much about straight lines and everything being perfect. So I hope that helped. I think so. Please show how to clip the fetlocks and, and pastures, but that wasn't, I don't think the word, but fetlocks. How do you do the okay. fetlocks? Now, since he has feathers, we're actually not going to be cutting his fetlocks unless the owner says it's okay to do it. But um, I'm actually, I'll demonstrate it without clipping so that way you guys can see where we actually go from. Um, you so, can if you want to. Oh, <laughs> I kind of don't. I okay. like his bell bottoms. Okay. <laughs> um, but I'll, I'm, I'm gonna work my, the best I can to show you guys how to clip it without really yeah. clipping mm -hmm. it. Uh, I was going to fade them in for you guys you, so you could see how feathers are done. Um, he was already trimmed up. You can tell uh, his owner takes very good care of him. His fetlocks are actually cleaned up here, so there's, there's not much that's stuck to them. Um, very, very clean. Good job. Uh, <laughs> so with a horse like this, you actually don't want to um, cut their feathers. This is his breeding. This is his natural way. Uh, some, some owners will, will clean it up and they'll actually look more of a, a warm blood instead of yeah, a draft horse. Yeah, I do put them all off okay. um, just because with the, with the hunting they just get so full of mud and disgusting that I feel like it's easier to um, help keep things like mud fever at bay. And everything, and scarf and, scruff, and everything else that grows scruff scruff it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. so I'm going to go and try my best without actually technically clipping it, but technically clip it, clipping it for you. So. Again, I'm going to let him know that I'm approaching him with the clippers, let him know everything's uh, turned on and running. Now, from behind the knee, a horse like this, um, they grow their feathers starting right about the chestnut area, which is right on this side. If I know there's many people that actually don't know what a chestnut is. It's technically their thumb, mm -hmm. right? And their fetlock um, is their pinky. So right here is, right here is his fetlock right underneath here, and right here is his chestnut. So most of these horses, draft horses, will start growing from their chestnut down, and they'll grow this beautiful, beautiful, fluctuous bell bottom. Um, as you can see, he's a good boy. He already lifted his leg up knowing that something's going on by his leg. So what we're gonna do with him is we're just gonna give him a little pressure and pull it right up. Now I use his hair um, just, to bring his ha uh, to, just to bring his leg up, because it actually is a lot easier than picking up a big, big foot like this. And this actually is used for that reason, um, just to, so actually a lot of farriers will pick their feet up from that, that way just to make it easier on them. So if I were to clip him, I would actually take right back here from the bowl of his foot and run the clipper to the back of his pasture, all the way to his fetlock. Now all of this would be completely off all the way up to his knee. So you would actually have a nice little shaven leg um, same exact thing that I do on the coat where I, I angle the clipper, which is, I'll use this area right here so you can see. Same thing that I would do, hey bud, I'm approaching your butt. He did, he's, he's playing. I just, you always want to make sure. Um, they have a mind of their own, obviously, and they have big feet. You do not want that big foot in your face or anywhere else on your body. So. Let's pretend this is a foot, a fetlock. So we're gonna go from here, and the same thing, actually, let me just angle this for a second. Okay. That's a little hoof. <laughs> a little foot. Um, so, for instance, this is the bottom of his foot right here. Now what I would do with that, same thing, from the corner band, up, you're going to clip on angles back and forth. So if you, if you notice, I'm actually taking the hair off even this di direction and coming across it again. 
Um, on the feet, it's very, very hard on the, sorry, on the legs, it's very, very hard to have no lines because of the smaller area that you're going into. So I would recommend doing what I call a basket weave, which is going back and forth, right to left, and if you notice, there's not one line there. We have another question. Do you think both of these clippers are good for smaller hands? The tiniest hands that I've ever put these clippers in belong to a three-year-old boy. Um, so yes, uh, from small hands to a gigantic hand, they're perfect. I mean, I have, I, I guess, average size hands, I don't know. <laughs> um, but then again, we're making a judgment. No, but let's see your hands, let's see. All right, so, see, even in a larger hand, who's got small hands here? Let's see some small hands. We have short, stubby ones. Okay, so we got large hands, average hands, short, stubby, stubby. hands. Easy to use. Easy. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Yep. It's Comfortable, too. One of the things that we designed, especially, you know, for the, for, for the smaller hand, and for, you know, to make it light and, to, and easy to grip. So it's something we, we put into consideration. All right. While you continue, we wanted to let our wonderful viewers know that we are giving away a Lister Star Clipper, thanks to Simon and Wall. And we have a raffle copter that is active right now on our page. So you have a week to enter. You have multiple ways to enter. So just make sure you go there. You go to our raffle copter and you get entered. And then we'll contact you guys next week about the winner. Good luck, everyone. Good yes, luck this is so yes. exciting. I'm really jealous, guys. Like, no idea. All right, so we're going to go ahead and give away this power grip by wall to one of our viewers right now. Gina, why don't you go ahead and shout one out for us? Uh, let me just random scroll Pick here. One. Pick a number there, Doug. Woo! Five. Number five. Number All right, five. Let me go to the top here. It's taking a while. Watch out, Jess. One, two, three, four. He wants to be in the shot. It's okay. I think that's Heather Campbell. Heather, Heather Campbell. Campbell. All right. Private message us with your information so we can get this sent out to you. Congratulations. So excited for you. You guys stay tuned because we have more. A lot of gifts. Um, all right. So we're going to cruise back. Onto his body, I'm going to use my smaller clipper right now, the KM10. Uh, and the reason why is I just kind of want to do a quick outline of the blanket clip, hunter clip that I'm going to leave behind. And then I'm going to come through with the Brevera clipper and really fine tune each line. Uh, that actually is my biggest um, question of the day is how I get straight lines. And I'm going to show you in a minute exactly how I do that. So I'm just going to take off, if I going to take off this part till about right here. So this whole area that's not being clipped off is going to be left behind just to keep his spinal cord area warm. Um, I know a couple horses that, I mean naturally through their breathing they're cold back, but I know a couple horses that because they were clipped they became cold back. And um, that actually can be you know, dangerous to certain people. So one thing I do recommend is when you do clip your horse, you let them acclimate to their nakedness, if I, if I must say it that way. Um, you know, they, the wind might blow up their tail a little bit and they might feel a little bit frisky or so for at least the first, you know, three days. Uh, let them feel their coat out, let them get turned out, uh, even lunge your horse before you ride it, just for safety reasons. My horse I could clip and get on five minutes later. Some tend to just go for like a yeehaw buckaroo, uh, you know. They feel so well, good. Well, it's like a little mini massage, too, well, you know. The you clippers feel, feel like... I mean, I run around. <laughs> <laughs> they run around, so I mean, it's kind of self-explanatory right there. Um, so again, I'm going to just cruise on, let him know that I'm coming to clip him. Now, if you notice his flank area right here, his hair was growing in this direction. Now, this, this ear is completely swiveling a different direction. So we're going to take our clipper and we're going to run it with the hair. Now if you notice, I came back around. Now I'm not going to go any higher than that because I'm going to run this clip across this way. Uh, a lot of people leave an arch area over their flank areas. It's just preference. Um, like I said, I have a couple clients that like straight lines and then some that, that don't. And you know, traditionally in a hunt clip, they'll, they'll 
fan over the uh, flank area. So I'm just going to leave a little, little fan over and I'm going to come over on this side and take all this off. Same thing. I'm angling my clipper blades and my clipper. Now if you notice, this hair grows completely, completely different than everything else. You're actually going to take your clipper and your clipper blade, turn it upside down, and run it downwards towards, towards the flank area of the horse. Now, this area right here is very, very delicate. Uh, it tends to get caught in the clipper blades itself. Even at the smallest, finest area, this is just very soft skin. It's the same skin as you have on your, your eyelids, which is very delicate. So when you're clipping this area, you want to take your hand. I oh, know, I'm touching you a little too close to your private area. <laughs> so if, he, if your horse tends to, to you know, point out their foot a little bit, take their tail and put their weight right back into it. Um, I'm, I'm, again, standing in the safety zone. He can still kick me if he wanted to, but I'm making sure I'm, I'm at least an arm distance away. Why is that? Because if I need to push off and get away from him, I still can. So, um, I'm not sure if I said it at the beginning, but you always want to make sure you have at least one hand or at least an attention to their, their vital signs. Meaning, if they pin their ears back, if they point out their toe, uh, if they snort or maybe make like an angry face. I've had horses that smiled at me and two minutes later, they were gone and the cross eyes were still there hanging with their holder. So it really, you have to really make sure that you are aware of your surroundings, uh, aware of what you're working with, how you're even dressed. Uh, normally I would wear a hat to protect my face from any hair that's falling and just to keep my hair out of my face. Um, same thing with them. You want to just make sure that everything for the horse, the way they're tied up, where they're standing, and where, obviously, where you're standing is a safety zone. So we're going to go back to clipping the flank area. So he knows I'm, I'm already here, and he doesn't like it, but that's okay. So, and now, do you, uh, 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 do you see the difference? What, what I want him to know is I'm not here to hurt him. I'm not here to do anything wrong. And now, there are horses that um, really don't like that area. So if you notice, I changed my position. I moved my body where he now can't get me. He could still, you know, if he wanted to, he could, he could hook me. Um, but I'm going to make sure for my safety and for his enjoyment, I'm not <laughs> all up in his private area. So I'm just going to rub his flank, let him know I'm coming back in around it again. I'm going to take my clipper and now run it across. Now if you notice, my clipper is going in a wave, um, a wave motion where it's going from down to up and back around. And back down. Now, since he was a little bit upset about that area, again, I'm in the safety zone. I'm just going to grab, very lightly grab my hand around this area, pull it out, and let him know I'm not here to hurt him. So that whole area is now secure underneath my hand, and I can't actually clip his skin or get it caught into. Now, if you have an issue and there's still too much skin, pull it out, meaning just grab it and pull the skin any which way you want. Their hair and their skin is actually very movable in, in certain areas. So for instance, that inside area that I can't get to without maybe putting myself in a danger zone, I'm just going to roll it out. So if you notice, everything from in there, I know, I touched you there, I know, I'm sorry, I'm very sorry. But if you guys see, this is not, you know, this is not a horse that is going to stand there and do nothing. This is your average everyday horse. It has, it has its moments, um, it's not tranquilized, it's not shanked, it's not twitched. So that comes with every clip you'll most likely do. Even the most show-ready, um, you know, superstar has its moments. You know, if I was going up to someone with a machine to their flank, I don't think he'd be happy either. <laughs> so, uh, again, I'm just going to take my hand, lightly run it by, and roll his flank out. That way it does not get caught in the blade at all. So we have a few more questions while you're in there. Cool. Um, the clippers that you're using right now, do they get hot? Yes. Um, and they don't, I'm not saying yes quickly as if they get burning hot, but just like anything else that doesn't have proper lubrication, it will get hot. Um, here, I'll come up close to you with this. So, let's get this back on there. Now, wool made it very easy for everybody to keep your clippers clean, cool, and cruising. 
So what you're going to do is push on this bottom button right here, clip it right off. Boom, that Should easy. Should you do that while it's on or off? Off, always off. off. Um, now, if this little blade right here is not set on to that perfect spot, if you notice, there's a little nodule right inside where that should line up to. If it happens to not perfectly line up, push it down, turn it on, and it will go right into that spot. So again, we're going to press the button, pull it right off, clean that whole area out. Now with our blade, cool thing that Wool did is made our blades very, very easy to clean. Um, everything comes apart from even the rubber part uh, that holds this bottom, bottom piece on to, to the top blade. So this piece is going to go right back on to here. Oh, my hands are oiled up. And while you're looking at those, do you recommend using a toothbrush to clean them out? Maybe you can use a toothbrush, um, but what I've actually came to finding that works easier is a computer desk um, keyboard sprayer. Uh, canned air? A canned air. It'll take it right out. My hands are slippery right now. Okay, so now that we have the rubber piece back on, we're going to slide. We're going to slide the blade right back in on its little line right there. There's your rubber piece that would hold it in. And now you can see everything is cleaned off. We're going to run it right back in, and then boom, perfect. Clip it right back onto its drive. Close it, and you're back to work. That easy. Um, now, now, that we're, <laughs> now that we're right back into running, we're going to take our oil. And now what I would recommend doing, a little oil there, a little oil there, boom. Now the bottom drives are right here. Do a tiny bit there, tiny bit there. Let it run its course, shake it out, and now you're really ready, ready for business. Yes, yes, a lot. Um, I've, I've came upon clipper blades that um, got extremely, extremely hot, and I even sat there and I was like, wow, what is going on? Um, and that, that honestly happened because something was either uh, wrong with the blade itself or the machine itself, uh, not necessarily um, how long it was running. Sometimes, uh, you know, everything has, can, can have an issue. I, I've came across blades that were either too, either thinly made. So when you're actually purchasing them and looking at them, make sure everything is put together correctly. You have your top blade running, running smoothly across your bottom blade, um, and everything is properly lubricated, and then you should not have any problems with heat or it overheating. Uh, I've clipped at the last past equine affair, I went for, what was it, I think an hour and 45 minutes straight without it being turned off. Just, just giving it a couple oil drops, and it never got hot. Um, I mean, obviously it got warm, because even now, me holding it with my hand, it's going to get warm, but it won't get hot. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Just make sure you have the proper lubrication for it. Two more questions. Yes. How do you suggest doing the girth area, and then what size clippers and blades do you do when you're making a design? Okay, uh, I'm gonna start off with the girth area. And then I'll get to the design part because that's a whole nother clipper. Um, the girth area again is the same, similar, similar to the flank area of being very um, thin, I hear my mouth, thin skinned and delicate. So on a horse like this, I mean obviously he's got a more pronounced armpit area and girth area. On uh, maybe on like a, a mini or even an Arabian or thoroughbred, they're a little bit tighter put together. So he's got a lot more for me to work with. But normally on a horse like, like this, or any, any horse, I would make sure I come in. Hi, bud. I'm going to grab off all the hair that I can, so that way you guys can see where I'm cruising with this. Now, this whole area right here is the very, very delicate, fragile area of a horse, including the flank. So what I'm going to do with this area is I'm going to take the back part and pull it off onto his leg. Same thing I was saying before, just pull their skin to the area that you need it to be clipped. So now if you notice, that area right here that was the delicate area, it's completely clipped off. But I didn't do it here, I popped it off to the side here. 
I hope that that helps a little bit with that. Um, now, another thing that you can do is grab the leg. Now, if you have an assistant or you have a well-behaved horse like this, you could grab the leg and pull the leg out forward. Um, I'm actually just going to use my knee to support it a little bit. Uh, maybe that is actually dangerous, but I'm just showing you guys for show purposes. Um, that's just to put a little bit of pressure on it. So if you notice now, the skin here is all stretched out. This skin actually won't be able to get caught into the clipper blade um, because I have it stretched out. So I'm going to come across and run my clipper down. Now there's a couple of hairs that are facing the opposite way, so I just turned my clipper around and got them off that way. Now if you notice, there's a little bit more of an area, so pull his leg out even more. Once again, having an assistant would help, but a good horse like this, he's actually kind of holding his leg up for me. So if you notice, now you have a perfectly cleaned girth area, perfectly cleaned armpit area. Good boy. You're a good guy. Yeah. We have a question for Simon. Excellent. Okay. Simon, I, feel I, I feel bad I should have helped you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Be my assistant. <laughs> Do these clippers have an electromagnet motor? They have a permanent magnet motor. Um, the star clipper does. Um, and what's the reason for the question? That was all they asked. All oh, right. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so as permanent magnet motor, the permanent magnet motor draws as much power as necessary. So when it's just turned on and running and not under load, i.e., not going through air. It doesn't need much power, and as it goes through some hair, it needs more power, and the, the, the motor and the circuitry um, draws that. So, so unusually cool. technical question yes. for this kind of thing. So, Surprise! Yeah, <laughs> but there we go. Hopefully that answered your question. And I guess the other things that you've been saying as well, which I've been listening to, absolutely fantastic. Oh. It's all about preparation, isn't it? Everything in terms of the clippers, you know, yourself as an individual horse, all horse. that kind of stuff, and lots of oil. I'm not sure we mentioned enough about the oil. <laughs> really, I don't. One more time. Okay. Oil. Is it the oil? <laughs> <laughs> well, in fact, someone asked, it's oil or, or sprays, and, and you... And wash. And, and wash. Um, I've, I've clipped a lot of horses, like I said before, that come straight from the field. Um, sometimes a little bit of coat conditioner, whether it's, a, you know, you have your Ethel, your Shackley, your Shoshi, and all of those. I mean, I personally like to use one that's not overly, overly um, silicone-based. Uh, that's because it, it, it will penetrate more to the bottom coat. Uh, but even if he is covered in mud, put a little bit of coat conditioner on and it'll make your job a lot easier. Uh, yeah, you'll, you'll get some grime and some dirt and some tough spots, but it comes with the trade of having a horse. Mm -hmm. So, and the grooming part gives you a little bit more time with your horse. Any more questions out there? Hope you guys are enjoying this. Oh, they are. Perfect. They're having a good time. Well, thanks. Thanks for tuning in. There was a mini question at one point, but oh. I don't remember what that mini one was. Okay. It's back up top. Jess will find it. Well, you. All right. Well, uh, I'm going to go over a couple things for, for different show purposes. Uh, like we said, this horse right here, he is an inventor. He's doing fox hunting. So we are on him. We're going to leave a, a little bit of a blanket clip. I know for certain disciplines, they don't like uh, longer um, bridle paths. They actually like maybe more of a, a two-inch bridle path. And then there's certain disciplines that like a four to a six-inch bridle path. Uh, it really depends. So I'm kind of hoping that mini question, I'm going along that mini question. Um, you know, they, they like their faces to be more refined uh, to the point that they actually take a human shaver and shave their muzzle, shave above their eyes, um, and they'll sometimes even shave the tips of their ears to make their ears look even smaller. Uh, in the mini world, they want everything to be tight and small and, and very refined. Um, but, for instance, in the Arab wor uh, world, they leave the tips of their ears uh, to make them more pronounced and to show certain, certain color uh, differences and, and things like that. And they like to have a, a six inch bridle path over just your two fingers or three fingers length bridle path. I know a lot of people like to pull the ear back and do the length of the ear. That's just old school style. <laughs> so um, if you're into like a certain discipline, check out what your discipline um, like rules are for instance. and you know, go along with that. So uh, I'm just going to head on to him, take off the rest of his neck and a little bit off his behind, and then I'm going to switch over to the Brevera Clipper so you guys could see what I use for my straight lines and what I use for designs. Um, so let me just take off anything. This, If anyone wants to hop on in and talk about some stuff while I'm cruising, that'd be, be yeah. great. Yeah, another clipper. 
Where are you at, Doug? You can talk about some of your wall products. There you go. Jump right in there. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tasha's is using the KM10. It actually uses a number. She's using a 10 blade currently, but you can also use a 15 or 30 for a little bit closer work and 40 for around the muzzle in, in closer areas. What size blade would you recommend for a mini that has two inch hair? I would probably grab my star before I would even do that for the, for the body work <laughs> overall. But I would, definitely a 10, a 10 wide if you want to get done a little quicker. Okay. Need a little bit more hair on. You guys have some grooming products too, right? Some nice brushes, brushes and... Uh, mane and tail brush, mane and tail comb. That are salt, fantastic, by the way. Some shedding tools, a sweat scraper. A lot uh, of my clients have, have gotten the chance to use um, those brushes. And nothing but phenomenal words behind it. Uh, I use the wool clipper, um, the wool brushes on a regular everyday basis. They're actually in my clipping box. So if I'm clipping your horse, he's being brushed with it. We're going to try and show you guys some of the grooming products that we have. The soft body brush. I love that brush. And it's nice because it's um, ergonomic, so it fits really nicely in your hand. It's a stiff body brush. This one has like the stiffer. Also, they're going to make them get in The two and one is mine. It's going to lay Doug up. Yeah, it's here. Yeah. The double shedder. Can't live without it. Now, this one's neat. Yeah, it's actually a, looks like a sweat scraper, but it's actually a shedding tool. Very easy to hold. It's two sided. So it's kind of nice to take extra hair off of that. Yeah. I was looking at that. I thought that was interesting. You have the one brush that. We don't have here, and it's like well, she was saying the two and one. Mm -hmm. so combo what? brush. The combo yeah. brush. Yeah. yeah. Soft on one end and stiff on the other. Yeah. Oh, so that might fantastic. be something you might. That's pretty unique to uh, wall. Yeah. It was yes. a patented, mm -hmm. patented brush style. And of course a curry. More of an easy to hold ergonomic style. All right. I think I feel the need to give one more clipper. Oh yeah. Show. Dude, let me pick someone. All right, pick a number. Rich. Seven. Seven? Lucky seven. Oh my Find I a seven. I can get back to seven. <laughs> so what can you guys tell us about the Power Grip Clipper? Because I know it comes in different colors now, right? Yeah, you have a pink, a solid pink, a coral. You can have a pink here somewhere. Um, and it's, it's a nice two-speed clipper, very quiet, like the KM10. It's what we call a snowman shape. So it's kind of ergonomic in your hand, easy to hold, especially for smaller grips. It's got about... There we go. This is the new color. Yeah, the new pink, though. yeah those are coming out. Or, nice well, we pink. actually should have them, but what, by the end of the week, I yeah, think? Yeah, should. Mm -hmm. A bright pink and a coral. Cool. We have a lot of pink lovers out there, yeah, no, so really they're going to be really pink. excited about it. Have you got back number seven yet? I, 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 I'm having a little trouble with seven, so I'll tell you what I'm just Looks gonna, like I'm Casey gonna... Campbell says she's number seven, so let's find out if that's true, Casey. Okay. That's what I, I got. Casey, give me a few minutes. <laughs> Which one, you, which one do you need? Pink one. Pink one? Yes, please. There you go. I love pink. Okay. There you go. All right. We should be close, huh? Almost. Oh, my gosh. You're not actually showing us all the comments because no, you guys. Not. So we have to. All right. We'll have to just confirm okay. it when we get back. You guys are commenting so much. We love it. Thank you. We can't get back to all the Sydney, comments. where are you? Number seven. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Sydney, if you please hear us. <laughs> That when we go to a remote location, it's all good. Well, here's the great part. Whoever wins that is now going to check it out and see how it works. Definitely I'm with plug that. In Lister a Star, get there and just ship to you just in time to get your uh, clipping season started. Whoever that lucky winner is. All right, so. Is that them on? Well, that's where I was going with. Here is the power grip. It's on. It's been running since I plugged in and I actually had the toggle switch turned on, not even realizing. This is the highest speed, that is the loudest it gets, and that is the quietest it gets. I mean, not only is it pink and fabulous, but, which everybody knows that I love everything pink. Um, Pretty much me But I love this, absolutely love it. So again, on this blade, um, on this machine I have a 10 blade, same one that I was using before, it's a 1.8. Uh, I'm just gonna cruise with it, so. Whoever the winner is and whoever else wants to grab one of these machines, I mean, it's magnificent. Oh, wow. Now, I'm actually going to bring it down to the lowest speed that it does. And you can still see 
that it's still going to cut that hair perfectly. Well, not only do we have this one, we have how many more back at home to give away? Like, share, and comment, like seven more? Yes, yeah, seven more back home we can give away. So for today, we're, gonna, we're calling home to get number seven for us, and then when we get back home, you can like, share, and comment, and we'll draw the winner for that on Friday. Actually, we're going to wait and do it on Monday. I'm sorry, we're going to do it on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> so that's seven Even more better. lucky winners that are going to get the power grip, and we're going to pull the winners on Monday. So like, comment, and share, guys. Yep. Sharing my birthday gifts with you guys. Yes, it's oh, awesome. Happy birthday to you all. <laughs> we can't get. All right, so I'm actually gonna put this one down. You saw how it cruised, how how perfect it made the clip. Now I'm gonna pull out my best friend, the Brevera Clipper. It is a small cordless clipper. It is a, I mean, it's a powerhouse of a machine. It has a five-in-one blade, which, if you notice, pops just just as easy as the rest of them. It's got a little notch right there where you stick that part in. Boom, that's it. Now five and one, what I mean by that is that five, literally five different blades on one blade. Um, the lowest that you will get is a 40. Yes. And your highest that you get will be the equivalent to what I'm clipping with. So now that we have kind of the outline of where I'm leaving his blanket clip, I'm now going to take my Brevera and I'm going to make my straight lines. And I'm kind of give, gonna show you guys a little bit of a secret of how I get those straight lines. Um, horses that are very fidgety and move a lot, I'll actually use either a chalk um, to make a line or a marker, a washable marker, and sometimes even duct tape. And what I mean by duct tape is not that gray one that will pull the hair off. I use that designer duct tape with like, you know, the flying pigs and the bacon and unicorns <laughs> on it. Um, it can't stick to itself, no, so right. it's not gonna stick to them. <laughs> The zebra um, prints. The zebra prints, exactly. Uh, so what I would do with that is I would actually, if anything, chalk, marker, or, um, or tape, tape it off to a point where I have a straight line. Uh, I know a lot of people saw me at the equine affair doing that, um, so I'm sorry I don't have duct tape on me today or chalk or a marker, but at least, at least you'll be able to see, oh, we do have a marker. So, um, for instance, I'll just dot along a straight line. Now my hand is locked, so it's making that perfect mark. I'm just putting a couple dots in so I know where where my line should be. Now it's not a permanent marker. It's not going to harm him. It's, it's actually a, that was one of those um, licorice uh, smellable washable yeah. ones. So it's safe on the horse. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my Brevera and my 5-in-1 blade and I'm going to bring it up to his highest point. Well, He's apparently enjoying this. <laughs> um, now, what I'm going to do with it is a little bit different than what you would think I would be cruising across normally like so, but I'm not. What I'm going to do is now take my clipper, flip it around completely. So now I have a straight edge. Now, it's not cutting me, it's not hurting me, it's turned on, it's not doing anything, but what it's going to do now is it's going to take that edge and make it perfect, perfect straight line. Now the hairs that are left behind, you could actually drag it down and it won't, it won't cut anything off other than what I left behind. So it's not taking that hair, that shorter hair that's already clipped off. It's just, see this excess right here? It's just gonna easily pull it right off to the same length that it was before. So if you notice, a perfect straight line from there. And I'm gonna cruise across. Now, Sometimes if their hair doesn't get into the clippers, uh, into the clipper blade itself, take your clipper and run it the opposite way. See how perfect that line just came out? Because that hair is now growing in a different direction. So I kind of had to, like I said before, angle my blade a little bit differently. Now obviously it's a breathing animal, so it's going to take a breath and it can make your line a little bit crooked just from breathing alone. I mean. I can't stand there and say, hold your breath, horse. But you kind of want to eye it off and make it as straight as you can as per the horse's size and the way it stands. Um, if you have a horse that has a little bit higher of a rump, you want to make sure that your front end of your blanket clip or anything is a little bit more level to the ground, not to his rump. Uh, you can make, you could give someone the illusion of having pretty much a perfectly confirmation of, on a horse 
just by the way you clip. Um, so I'm just going to cruise across this again. Any more questions on how I flip this across? No, but around? we have a lot of comments about how people use these clippers for their poodle coats. So mm -hmm. that is really a good point for Wall because they have a lot of animal products and it's not just horses, it's for dogs as well. And I actually, I um, <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> for cutting hair at home. <laughs> but I actually use um, a Wall portable clipper for my um, shisu that we let grow a little bit and we always give them like a nice summer cut and we just tidy them up in between cuts so it's good that people notice that so let me get my oh, I use the power grip. Not a problem. so now I'm going to use the power grip to come across and do my fan area on his um, on his hot spot by his flank um, Actually, the star would work a lot better, but what I'm going to do is use this one only because um, it is a little bit more of a sensitive area and he was a little bit touchy before. So just, just in case people at home have touchy horses, I'll start off with this and then I'll switch over to the star so you can see the difference on that part. I'll do one side with it and one side without. Um, so what I like to do is actually have a panned out hand length from, from his, his flank area here Hand out hand here, the so hand out hand here. So pretty much one full hand fanned out. That's, that's, that's what I like to do. I know a lot of people like either smaller ones or even bigger ones that come across. I mean, a hot spot is a hot spot. A fan here or a fan there is really not going to make or break it. So you're going to come in from this area and do a nice sunshine circle. Same thing, coming across this area. Do a nice sunshine, circle back around. <laughs> Clip off the excess hair. And now you have a perfectly That's opened pretty. up flank area. It's a little bit bigger um, uh, than what I normally would do. I do a little bit smaller, but he is a lot larger of a horse. And he has a nice voluptuous booty, so we want to kind of <laughs> maybe tone that down a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it is a nice apple bottom. So uh, I'm going to go back to my... Oh, good. We have a question about those. How cool. long does the charge last on them? Um, well, I'm really bad. I don't charge mine all the time. I actually, once in a while, will plug them back in. So that's the great part about it, is that if they start to die, they will, um, they will still work when they're plugged in. But normally you get about a good hour out of them, uh, maybe a little bit more, depending on, on how, what you're doing with them. I mean, if you're going across doing a full body, yeah, it's not going to last that long. But if you're going around doing a few little touch-ups or, you know, a little design or your muzzle, your ears, your, you know, your cleanups, it'll last you a while. I haven't plugged mine in since, sorry to say it, since Massachusetts uh, Equine Affair, which was in November. So they haven't been on the charger. They've been actually in my box, and they're still working. Once in a while when I see that battery, this is the best part. Once in a while when I see that battery go down to the bottom, I plug them back in and they charge right back up. And then I use them for probably till the next equine affair and then plug them in again. It's true. So they have a, um, an awesome battery, a lithium battery in them, so they last a lot longer than any other clipper on the market right now with their, with their batteries and their cordless. It's, uh, it's just an awesome machine. I highly, highly recommend it. And I'm not saying that because I am sponsored by Wall. I'm saying it because it's the truth. Uh, every machine that I've used here today has made my job and their clipping a lot easier and a lot more enjoyable. Um, so I highly thank them and I highly recommend them. So we're going to come across again and finish off his blanket clip. Any other questions out there regarding the Brevera? No, no. We're so far they're just loving everything. All right. Doing. Well, thanks guys for tuning in again and glad to hear that you're loving it. So I'm going to let him know that I'm back here. Same thing, grab my clipper, run it across. So I have my clipper set at its lowest, lowest point. There's its highest, there's its lowest. Now, I don't know if you guys could hear this over the, over the Facebook right now, the tiny bit of vibra like, vibration sound that it's got. So what I'm gonna do is grab the oil. And while you're doing that, will these work for grooming cats with long fur? Yes, yes they will. And again, husbands with long fur. I mean, any, any, anything you want to put them to. <laughs> so, do you hear the difference now between it being oiled to not being oiled? Definitely. 
I'm really not sure that we've mentioned oil enough. Oh, uh, just one more time. <laughs> no, really, honestly. <laughs> oil is the lifeblood of the clipper. Oh. Absolutely essential. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let him know again. I, just in case, I always make sure they know I'm coming across. So I got it at my highest point. I have the clipper flip back. Oh, let me seal that marker one more time. So that way uh, everybody... Oh, no, sorry. Okay. That way everyone knows how this cruises across. Just a nice quick line from there to there. Now that washes off, so no worries. It's humane, guys. Don't worry, I'm not doing anything wrong to him. I'm going to take my clipper, make my straight line. How much are these clippers? I'm sorry, I couldn't... What, around 150? Around 150. And keep a lookout because once in a while, Wall, um, Big D's, uh, the Equine Affair will have specials going on. So definitely keep an eye out for them because you never know. You might get, for 150, you might get a clipper with another clipper or a grooming bag or some grooming products. Um, well, we have the KM10 with a free clipper coming up. Oh, the perfect. Of mm -hmm. the end of April. So end of April, guys, tune in. There's going to be a free clipper uh, through Big D's. So definitely get in on that. And then with the lift clipper, we get a free medium label on the back. I'm going to wrap his hair around. Thank you. Now, if you notice all this hair left behind, I'll just take my other clipper. Now, again, there's a, there's a little bit of a hot spot in this area under his tail. So what we're going to do is I'm actually going to put myself in an unsafe area just so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. So his tail naturally will fan out and keep his buttocks nice and toasty. So we want that area to be cleaned out completely and pronounced so that way he's not sweating, the hair doesn't get caught to it. So I'm going to move his, going to let him know that I'm going up by his butt. Move to my safety zone. I'm going to take his tail, push it to the side. Now I'm just going to run my clipper, let him know that I'm in this area. I'm just going to run my clipper along the inside of his butt cheeks. And right to the end of his tailbone, right here, this area, that's where I'm going to take my clipper, right up to that. Somebody had asked earlier if you should do a V, um, since there, you're right here. It wouldn't be, um, I mean, I can throw a V on him, but for a clip like this, you actually wouldn't put a V on him. And the reason why is because this whole area is um, covered, but naturally, if you were to do a full body clip, I'll actually draw it out for you. Um, I'll do it with my hand, it's, I don't need the marker. Um, I have a lot of people who will just take the, I mean clients, not people, I'm sorry, uh, who will take their, their clipper and just go and and then you got this, this thing up there. I don't even know what they call it. It's not even a V at that point. And they think it's okay. Um, and then you see the horse in the, in the show ring or in its paddock, and you're looking at this you know, mullet haircut going on in the background. So just to have it more of a natural look, what you want to do is take your hand and lift that tail up. Now, if you notice, there's a pronounced area of where his tailbone meets to his actual spinal cord, spinal cord right here. So this whole area right here, that's the only thing that should be left behind. So since I'm not clipping that area today, I'm just gonna take my marker and I'm going to just outline it so you guys could see exactly what you need. Now if you notice, that marker's going right down into the, into the butt cheeks pretty much, hiding right behind the tail. So now, this horse has a perfect perfect illusion of a, a larger, longer tail. If you need a longer tail, yes, you could go up a little bit higher. On minis, for instance, they'll run, they'll leave that hair all the way up about quarter way into their, the, into the tail, uh, into the back end, just to make that area either look longer or pronounced. I would just recommend doing something a little bit right here, making it look more natural. And you want to make sure that you line up with your horse's spinal cord. So if you have to, take a marker and draw it out for yourself. Um, but easiest thing to do is take your clipper. If you don't have a marker, sorry, if you don't have a marker, take your clipper. I'm not going to turn it on because I don't want him, we're actually not clipping that area. 
But right here, if you notice, the end of his tail and his buttocks where they meet, there's two little spots. Take your clipper and run it right into that line. Same thing on this side, run it right into that line. Um, you know, like I said, it's not going to have that mullet looking effect behind it. It's going to have more of a natural look. Um, so I'm just going to take this off quickly. If there's anyone else that needs to, uh, you got any questions quickly? I'm just going to finish this up and then we're, we might be wrapping up soon. So get those questions in so I can get them answered for you. Um, for the grooming products, what is the best way to sanitize the brushes as well as the clipper blades? Um, okay, well, personally, I like to wash my brushes with a little bit of either um, alcohol and make sure that they're completely cleaned out. Um, also, you know, ivory soap to get any oil that's stuck on them. Uh, Big D's, uh, even Wall, even Lister, they all have their own um, cleansing products uh, that I would recommend uh, picking up. But you could even use just, you know, your household items. Definitely not bleach. Do not use bleach because I have seen horses beyond naked, beyond clipping naked because they were bleached. Um, if you want to use a tiny bit for your brushes, take a cap full, put them in a big bucket of water, and then clean them up that way. Um, clippers, clippers, I do not recommend putting them in a bucket of water. Um, <laughs> I just, I would say take a brush, brush them off really well. Sorry, let me just grab the brush. Sorry. I would take a brush, brush the whole clipper off. You could even get a sanitary spray. Um, or the aerosol spray. So right in there, take it, brush it right off. Now, Lister and Wall, um, all their clippers that they have came out with, be right back, all make cleaning process easy for everybody. So, and that's really it. That's right. <laughs> that, that's really it. I mean, if you want to grab a brush and some, some spray, yeah, cool. Go ahead with it. But other than that, make sure there's no hair in the drives, no hair in the tracks. Make sure your clipper blades are cleaned off. Um, you know, tie up your cord and put them back in the box. Charge them if you so. Charge them if you have to. Or, you know, every equine affair like I do. Um, you know, and make sure they're just, they're lubricated properly so they, you know, just in case it, it happen, you don't happen to use it for two years and, you know, metal does rust. But if you keep them lubricated, they won't. So. And should you use oil? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Simon! <laughs> Today's watch rate is oil. Uh, um, with, the, with the list of blades, obviously, because they're, they're, they, they come, uh, come separate, um, just a, 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 a brush to wash down. Um, if you do wash them down, make sure they're really dry because... Rust, uh, rust does like metal, uh, and it never sleeps good. Um, but, uh, and also just um, wrap them in a lightly oiled rag, and don't leave them out. Uh, don't leave them in a barn. Make sure they're in a sort of dry, dry area. Um, and they'll last. And obviously a good time during the off-season is to get them um, lapped, never ground, it's resharpened. Um, they do that, they do that 21 times. So, well, um, times yeah, I'm no good at maths, so that's, that's quite a lot of horses to be clear. <laughs> well, here's the cool part about all that. All these blades, everything that you, you see in front of us, you could give, well, not necessarily Simon a call, but you could give Lister a call, and you could give Wall a call. And um, you could package them right up and send them out to them, and they will sharpen them for you. Uh, a lot of our clippers come with either a two to a five year warranty. Uh, not only that, even if your warranty does run out, they love their customers. So if you have a big issue or anything like that, they'll take care of you. Um, if anything, come see me at the equine affair in April too. So if you need any help with that stuff. And if you do have clippers that need to get fixed up, bring them there. Um, or bring them over to Big D's or call Simon. Yeah, he's he's uh, got the oil. He's 1-800-OIL or something. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all, all this information is on you know, websites, um, you know, wall websites, wallanimal.com. Yes. Um, and if you have a look at horse-clipping.co.uk, I'm English, apologize for the .co.uk thing. There's lots of information about Lister Clippers on there. Um, some helpful videos. Uh, Tash has been brilliant, and uh, I've learned a lot today. Uh, okay. <laughs> well, everybody, thank you very much for joining us. Um, thank it's you been so great. Much. It's been awesome. Thank you, guys. We do have some more clippers to give away. Um,
I said number seven, we will let you know when we get back home. Said so he must be working or something, so we have no idea who number seven is, but we'll be giving those away. <laughs> yes, and then just make sure that you like, comment, and share from now through Monday, and we will obviously message you through a private message to let you know if you're the winner, and then we'll announce them to everyone on our Facebook page. We just really want to say thank you to Simon, yeah. Natasha, and Doug, Doug for coming out and hanging out with us. And Stephanie this has been great. great. Jess. Jed and Paladin for being fantastic. So thank you guys and catch us soon. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Bye.